Who here has heard of living zero waste? Nice. Do you guys think it's possible then, if you've heard of zero waste, to live without making any garbage? Some knows. Who thinks it's possible to live without making garbage? That's a, no hands, basically. <laughs> so I live a zero waste lifestyle, which means inherently that I don't make any trash, and I haven't for the past three years. So this jar right here represents all of the trash that I've made in the past three years. So living zero waste, right, this big concept. To me, it basically means that I don't make any garbage, so I don't send anything to landfill, I don't put anything in a garbage can, and I don't kind of like throw things or give it to my mom and say like, hey, deal with it, don't tell. Nothing. Um, but I do compost and I do recycle, but only minimally. So this all started kind of rewind back to here. You can kind of wear as Waldo me in the middle. Um, I was protesting. I've been a big climate activist for a really long time. I started um, after seeing Gasland and kind of grew to be a big advocate towards speaking out against the oil and gas industry. Um, and my senior year of college, I was taking a course called my Environmental Studies Capstone course, which is essentially the last course that you have to take as an environmental science major in order to go out into the world and make it a more sustainable place. But there was a girl in this class, and every single class she would bring this big plastic bag with a big plastic clamshell full of food and a plastic fork and knife and a plastic water bottle and a plastic bag of chips. And she would eat everything and throw it all in the garbage. And I would just stand there like, what are you doing? You know, like, we're these environmental studies students trying to make the world a more sustainable place, and you're making so much trash. And I would just kind of stare at her and, like, think angry things, but I never really said anything. And one day after class, I went home to make dinner, and I opened my fridge, and I saw for the first time, I don't know how I never noticed this before, but every single thing that I had in there was packaged in plastic. And I felt like the biggest hypocrite in the entire world, right? Because I was this activist. I was protesting against the oil and gas industry, but I was a huge consumer of one of their biggest byproducts, plastic. And so I made a decision in that moment to stop using plastic. But that's really hard, right? <laughs> because you think about the things that you use in your everyday life, so much of what we're using here today, this thing that I'm holding, our yoga mats, the clothes that we're wearing, um, the toothpaste tube that we brushed our teeth with this morning, so many things in our life come packaged in plastic. And I realized that if I was going to move away from plastic, I had to not just find alternatives in stores, but I had to make a ton of stuff myself. But that too was really hard because I didn't know how to make anything myself. I didn't know how to make toothpaste, I didn't know how to make deodorant, I didn't know how to make cleaning products. So I was basically starting from zero. And so to find out how to do all these things, I went online um, and I started researching. Um, and I found this blog called The Zero Waste Home. Has anyone heard of it? Yeah. So The Zero Waste Home was started by a woman named Bea. She's totally awesome. You guys should all check it out. Um, she has two kids and a husband out in California, and the four of them live a totally zero waste life. And when I learned about Bea, I was so insanely impressed, you know, because here I was not using any plastic, thinking I was the greatest person in the entire world, but realizing that I didn't have to make any trash was so empowering, right? It made so much sense to me because I cared about the environment, I protested for the environment, I was doing all these things studying the environment, but I wasn't actually bringing that into my everyday life. And so I made the decision to go zero waste. But going zero waste, again, like you guys don't think it's possible and probably sounds really hard, but the truth is, is that it's not that difficult. It kind of just takes a little bit of planning and thinking, and there were some things that I did that really helped me to reduce the amount of trash that I was using. So I did things like stop buying first-hand clothing, because so much clothing that is produced today is made using you know, poly-based materials, and it's super wasteful, tons of water, um, energy, and so I only used secondhand clothing, so I was recycling what was already put into the waste stream. I also stopped buying packaged food. So, you know, you go into a grocery store and you're basically inundated with a million things that are packaged in plastic and paper and glass and metal, and I decided to just start saying no to that, and so I brought my own bags and mason jars to the store, and I fill them up in bulk shops, um, and then I'll buy all of my fresh produce at the farmer's market. So just by using things like that, I was able to drastically reduce how much trash I was producing. And doing this brought a lot of really awesome things into my life. The first thing that happened is that I save a lot of money. Um, 
which is, you know, kind of the benefit that a lot of people like to focus on, right? You know, this must be really expensive. Living sustainably is probably super expensive. That's the argument that we always get, right? But actually living this lifestyle saves me so much money. The first thing, you know, talking about buying secondhand clothing, you know, you can go to a store now and buy a pair of jeans for like $200, which makes me want to throw up because <laughs> it's disgusting. You can go to like a secondhand store and buy the same designer jeans for like a dollar in some places. And so just by taking time to actually evaluate what I really, really need to wear and by buying it secondhand, I'm saving a ton of money. I also save a lot of money by buying my food package free because at least 15% of the cost of a product is embedded in the packaging costs. So by buying things without packaging, I'm saving a huge chunk of money. And also by buying things unpackaged, I'm eating better because you can't buy pa uh, processed high sugar food products package free. It just doesn't exist. I'm eating things like fresh fruit and vegetables from the farmer's market, grains, um, beans that I buy in bulk, and my diet has improved. And so my weight has stabilized. I feel better. And because of those things, you know, because of saving money and because of eating better, I feel happier. For the first time in my life, I'm actually living in alignment with my values. And how often can we say that, right? So I'm doing exactly what I believe in. I'm not just talking about how much I care about the environment. I'm actually doing things in my day-to-day -day life to live that way. So if this is interesting at all to you, and you think maybe you'd be interested in reducing how much trash you're producing, I have some steps. Um, and the first thing that I like to suggest is evaluating your trash, because you can't solve a problem of having a ton of trash until you know what that actual problem is. So, I suggest to go into your trash can and kind of look what's in there. For me, when I did that, my three main sources of trash were food packaging, and so I learned how to shop in bulk or package free, product packaging, and so I learned how to make all of my own products, so all of my skincare and my home care, and my beauty products, and organic food waste, and so I learned how to compost. And just by doing those three things, I eliminated essentially 90% of my waste. The second thing that I like to suggest, and the thing that, you know, I think is most applicable to so many people is the low-hanging fruit. So doing little one-time changes in your everyday life that make a big, you know, a large-scale and long-term impact. Because maybe we're busy people, we don't have time to do everything, but these are little changes that we can make, you know, in a day that have a really good impact. So things like using a stainless steel water bottle instead of a plastic water bottle, using a reusable napkin instead of, you know, taking paper napkins all the time using a mason jar to go coffee, or reusable to-go coffee cup instead of taking a single-use coffee cup. So essentially just eliminating all of the single-use items that you would use by having a little bit of thinking before you leave your house and just grabbing a couple of things. And the third thing that I like to suggest is DIY, so actually learning how to make all of your products yourself. And when I started doing this, um, I like to tell this story because it makes me look even more of a hypocrite. Um, my boyfriend at the time, when we first met, he would brush his teeth using baking soda. And I thought he was disgusting. My mom probably thought he was disgusting. And I thought, you know, there's no way you could actually get your teeth clean using baking soda. And then you fast forward to me starting to live this lifestyle, and the first thing that I started making was toothpaste using baking soda. Um, but it totally works, and my mouth feels really clean, and I would never go back to using regular toothpaste. In fact, when I had to go and use a friend's toothpaste the other day, my mouth was like, oh, I can't believe if I used to use this. So really, it feels good. So when I started living this lifestyle, I was still in college, um, and when I graduated, I had a job that was a good job, one that you'd want if you were studying environmental science and you wanted to go work in that field. I was sustainability manager for the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, which is essentially the agency that regulates all of New York City's drinking and wastewater. Cool job. But at the same time, I was running my blog called Trashes for Tossers that talks all about my lifestyle, and I was getting this question over and over again. And it was, you know, hey, Lauren, I really like the products that you're making, and I really want to live sustainably, but I just don't have time to make them. I'm a busy person, life gets in the way, what can I do? And I realized that, you know, there are no products out there in stores that are as sustainable as the ones that I was making myself. And so, for beauty products that were one, there were ones that you know had shea butter and cocoa butter and coconut oil, sustainable products, but for cleaning products, there just weren't any options. And when I looked into cleaning products more, I learned some really terrifying things, in my opinion. I learned that 
In the cleaning product industry, in the chemical industry, there are over 85,000 industrial chemicals that are used, and a majority of those chemicals aren't even tested for safety before they're released out into the market to be used. And when I started looking at cleaning products further, and even just the sustainable cleaning products, I realized that cleaning product manufacturers aren't legally required to disclose the ingredients of the products on the product packaging. And so when you're buying a cleaning product, you're basically at the mercy of the company, hoping that they have your best interest in mind, hoping that they're not putting anything toxic in there. But when I started looking into the ingredients, for some of these products, because they do have to disclose them online, I realized that there are things like endocrine disruptors and carcinogens in even the sustainable cleaning products brand. And I think that's totally unfair. You know, it's like we're getting duped. And I believe that we as consumers have a right to products that aren't toxic, that aren't bad for us, that are safe for our homes and our bodies and the environment. And so I decided to make a company uh, creating the products that I've been using for years, products that I know are safe and products that I know are effective, that are made with things that you can find in your kitchen cabinet, things like baking soda. And so I started the Simply Co, making organic cleaning products that are also vegan and packaged in reusable packaging to help to promote a zero waste economy. So when I started living this lifestyle, I was doing it for myself. I never thought that it would turn into me starting a blog or me quitting my good job to start a company selling laundry detergent, right? You would never think that would happen. But what I learned was that when I was an environmental studies major, I would go and try to pester everyone into living the life that I thought that they should live. You know, I realized things like, oh, you know, not drinking organic milk is really bad for you. Again, I would tell my mom, only drink organic milk. And she didn't really understand why or what the, what the problem was. And I would kind of just like yell at people because I was learning all this information that was really scary and I didn't know how to present it. And I realized that by trying to force people to live a lifestyle, it's not gonna work. It's like when you try to discipline a child and tell them not to do something. The first thing they're gonna do is exactly what you tell them not to. And so I realized that when I started, or when I stopped telling people how to live and when I started living in alignment with my values, everything changed. You know, I was living exactly the life that I wanted. I was living consistently. And people around me started changing. You know, I went to my dad's house and he said, come over to the garbage can this month we had one bag of garbage and two bags of recycling. But last month, we had two bags of garbage and one bag of recycling, and I never asked him. And so what I've learned through all of this is, really, the best thing that you can do is live your values, because when you do, when you live in alignment with what you believe in, you can only inspire people, and you don't have to tell people to change. They'll be inspired by you and want to do that, too. Thank you. There's no longer any doubt about what's going on with climate change, but we're losing the fight because fights aren't about data and research and things. In the end, fights are about power. The other side has all the money that there could ever be. The only way to match that money is with the things, the kind of currencies that movements can bring to bear.